Hello everyone, welcome to Stochastic Calculus for Finance 1. This is section 3.3 .3 on the Capital Asset Pricing Model. So here's an overview of this section on what we're going to study. So first I will talk about the basic of Capital Asset Pricing and we can try to understand what it means. Then I will give the contracts the difference between Capital Asset Pricing and Arbitrage Pricing. Then we'll move on and talk about the different use cases of risk neutral versus the real world probability. Then we'll using, using the information that we learned here, we'll solve the problem which is of optimal investment decision uh, given uncertainty. So here we go. So basics of capital asset pricing. So Capital asset pricing can be seen as like an alternative to the arbitrage pricing model. So generally speaking, there are two different methods to model asset prices, the no arbitrage model. And this one assumes that there is no arbitrage in the market. And we use that fact to really price derivatives as we have done so far. So this is the model that we have seen so far in this, uh, uh, in this book. Then uh, as a contrast, there's like the capital asset pricing, which one like emphasizes like the uh, difference, the, the market in the demand and supply, and also uses a utility function that converts like units of consumption into units of happiness. So let's look dig into deep, a little bit deeper into this and try to understand this too. So no arbitrage pricing. So this one has the advantage of. Uh, it gives precise quantitative results. So using no arbitrage, you can find the precise price for different assets or different derivative securities. And it's actually very compelling. Uh, when you think that markets are complete, that is like they are efficient. So the arbitrage pricing is actually very compelling, uh, compelling uh, technique to use. However, some markets are known to be incomplete, imperfect. And if the market, if you like in a market that's inefficient, then it's it's not it's not a very strong tool to use. On the other side, we have the capital asset pricing model, and for this model, it can use it can give very useful qualitative insight into markets. Uh, however, because it's mostly qualitative, it does not provide the precise quant result that we receive while using arbitrage pricing, and that's like a downside. However, capital asset pricing can be the only defensible method when the markets are inefficient slash incomplete. So that's why it's still a very, still very useful method to use. So then let's try to just like very bird over bird view of when we will use the risk neutral and when we use the real world probability. Well, as we have seen so far, when we're using pricing, then really care only about the risk neutral probabilities. And we have covered this in quite uh, extent so far using the binomial model. But however, for risk management, like risk managers really don't care about a probability of uh, default in some imaginary dimension. They really care about like the real probability of a catastrophic event happening that could impact their business. So in risk management, they will be really focused on using real world probabilities. However, we can think about how risk neutral pricing comes in because in risk management, you might need to do some uh, some scenario analysis, right? What if interest rate goes up? How will that impact my portfolio? So you have different scenarios that you will need to reprice the price of your assets under those scenarios. And that is where basically uh, risk neutral probability can still come, come in in risk management. And for asset management, really like the focus is on a trade-off between risk and expected return using real probabilities again. And here, risk neutral probability can be used to find optimal investment strategies. And I will show you how uh, that can be done in this section as well. So let's talk about very quickly about utility functions. So in our study, we use utility function that is, as a function that is one, non-decreasing, and two, that is concave. The function must be non -decre non -decre not decreasing because more make us happier. So if I give you $100 today, you'll be happier than if I gave you $1. So that's the assumption. And two, we assume that investors are risk averse. And 
and that is why uh, the concavity is coming in so to give more color on this uh, this iterative function we can look at the simple example so imagine like we you're playing this game where we're tossing a coin if you get if you get head then you get $99 however if the coin toss result in a tail you get only $1 so what we would choose, right? And what I mean by what we choose, what we choose between playing this game or receiving for sure the fifty dollars. So if you're just looking at the expected value, then we can see that the expected value of this gamble is fifty dollars, right? And that's very simple to see. We have fifty percent chance of getting one dollar and fifty percent chance of getting ninety nine dollars. And this so that is basically uh, the expected value is 50. So what would we choose between the game that has an expected value of $50 or receiving $50 for sure just today? Odds are, if you if you, if you don't care about the risk, then you will be indifferent between the gamble or the for sure $50 in your pocket. But many investors in the market are actually risk averse. So they would prefer to receive the $50 for sure instead of playing this gamble and taking a chance of on getting $99, but also there's a chance of getting just only $1. And often that risk will, will discourage people from taking the gamble and will just take the $50. So that means if you just look at expected returns, expected uh, payoff, um, then we're not taking into account that, that characteristic of investors. However, if instead that we're looking at expected utility, then we can take into account that uh, that behavior of investors. And for example, this is like a very classic utility function that is usually used. That's like the, log, the logarithm, because the logarithm is non-decreasing and it's concave as well. So this is like a perfect uh, one of the, one a very good candidate to be used as a utility function. And I'm also reminding the Jensen inequality that we have seen for this for our concave function. And that just means that the utility of a sure amount is greater. This should be greater. The utility of a, of a, of a sure amount is greater than the utility from a gamble. And I can show you how, how this does. So let's, let's start to calculate our happiness if we're getting the $50, 100% for sure. So the utility for that will be uh, utility of the expected value of X, where X is our payoff. You just basically ln of 50. However, the expected value of the gamble, the expected value of U of X, is nothing but 50% chance of getting one dollar plus fifty percent chance of gaining ninety nine dollars and ln of one is zero for sure so if you do the calculus the calculations here you will I will let you to verify that you will find that this amount ln of fifty is greater than one half ln of ninety nine so then that means like uh, risk and risk averse in investor that using the utility function this utility function log will find that they will be having more happiness by taking the fifty dollars for sure and remember this is greater than instead of just taking the gamble so the next section uh, we will talk about uh, in the next video i'll talk about the optimal investment uh, strategy that an investor can use given uncertainty. Thank you.